I was a consultant for Amazon sellers. Um, I launched over 400 products for different sellers. And I'm kind of an argumentative person. So if I see people giving wrong information on Facebook, like I would jump on and, and, and like make big long posts with all my graphs and data and showing that what they're saying is BS. By the way, you know, my, my initials might be BS, Bradley Sutton, but you get no BS with me. Can you ask me to pause the music for just one second? Hey, can you guys pause the music real quick? What's up, welcome back guys, Simon Brax here. And as you saw at the beginning of this video, I had a conversation with someone who's done over 400 launches on Amazon FBA. And these are the bits of that conversation. If you want the full conversation, it's on the Facebook group below. Check it out after watching this video. I actually timestamped the different topics that we talked about, so it'll be in the first comment below if you want to skip around. If you want to see more super interesting FBA con- If you want to see more- <laughs> God damn it. If you want to see more, <laughs> Amazon FBA, click on the link below. Get it right! If you want to see more super interesting FBA content like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and congrats to the giveaway winner. Contact me on Facebook to set it up. And if you want to win the next one, screenshot this or take a photo of it on your Instagram page, tag me and I'll choose someone from there. And yeah, enjoy this video. You guys, you can put music back. Okay, good. How to see launch campaigns. Okay, keyword research, you know, I could talk 30 minutes. I'll try and keep it within three minutes, but the number this is what i do for keyword research um again going back to finding out what is relevant for a buyer one mistake that sellers make is that whatever um reverse asin tool they're using whether it's cerebro by helium 10 or whatever other one they'll look at who's the top selling one in the niche and then they're like let me copy all their keywords because obviously they're doing something right because they're number one seller and then that's what they do but here's the, the danger in that when you just base it off of one asin that ASIN could have been on the Oprah Winfrey show or Dr. Oz. And there's maybe a catchphrase that got related to that, that product. And everybody is searching for that catchphrase, but that's only relevant to that product. So you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a launch for that keyword and you're on page one and you're getting zero sales. You're wondering why? Well, it's because that that keyword is only really important to that product. So what I say is find the top four or five best sellers in a niche. All right that are most like your product. Like they look, they feel, they price, the function, almost all the same as your product. Because the reason is now you know that their customers is your target market as well. So you wanna know what's their customer's buyer behavior. You take those five ASINs, you plug it into Cerebro and you can pull all of the keywords that any one of them are ranking for. Then I use a filter and say, show me, well, not what just one is ranking for, not what two, but all five are ranking for, but not only that, what all five are on page one organically for. So then I have like five reasons to believe that, oh my God, this is definitely an important keyword. And usually you start out with a list of 10,000 keywords just by doing that filter, you, it whittles it down to like 20 keywords. So there's no doubt in my mind, once I see this list of 20 keywords, hey, this is relevant to my product because the five of the top sellers, they're all getting sales from because you're not gonna be on page one for a good keyword if you're not converting for it. So that's how I pick the most important keywords for my listing. And that's something that I learned recently uh, about Helium 10, that you can look at five competitors, look at them at once and then filter by who's like, how all of them or where all of them are ranked. Exactly, exactly. And what else did she ask? Uh, mm -hmm. How does he improve product discoverability? How does he get more sessions on his listing? Um, that, that's, that's just about picking the right keywords. Again, that was picking the most important keywords, but obviously you can have a thousand keywords in your listing or, or more, you know, depending on, on what category you're in. So again, picking what has been proven to be relevant to buyers, even if it's a lower search term, you know, word, um, to get there. And then of course, PPC, of course, is, is going to help you scale sending outside traffic. Amazon loves outside traffic. That's one thing that's different in 2018, 2019. That was not the case in 2016 is building a brand is getting more and more important. So I suggest to all of you, whether you're just starting off or even if you're established, start concentrating on building a brand, build a community on Facebook, build an Instagram following, build an email list and get um, loyal customers. And then to have those loyal customers come to your Amazon listing from outside of Amazon. Amazon loves that stuff. So that's going to be important too, to get more eyes on your product because yeah, of course, at the end of the day, a search in Amazon is the biggest chance to get you a sale, but everybody's doing the same thing now. So you got to differentiate yourself, bring in that outside traffic and, and Amazon will, will reward you for it. All right, Kelsey, top mistakes you've seen FBA sellers make lately when launching new products. Um, 
some of the things we've already mentioned, you know, yeah. they focus more on Amazon relevancy instead of buyer relevancy. They target the wrong keywords. You know, they don't do enough research. They don't put the time. They, they don't follow it up. Like they guess if they're doing a giveaway or, or whatever, or their PPC, they go really hard for two weeks and then just put it on auto autopilot. Oh, it's going to start selling. No, that you're, you're going to drop it. You got to constantly keep tweaking things. Um, if you're going to do a giveaway launch, make sure you're either running PPC at the same time or definitely right after that launch, because you've got to get more, um, you've got to get more eyes on your listing. So those are some of the, some of the, I mean, there's many mistakes, but those are some of the, the, the top ones that, that I see. She also asked, do you price down at launch and then raise the price over time? That's something that I actually want to know as well. I, I've done both. Um, I, I've done both. Uh, and it depends on, on the, on the niche. This is more important when you're in a more competitive niche, especially because if you're coming in with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reviews, and a lot of the guys on that first page are have uh, you know 500 or more, well, you've got to give buyers a reason to even click on your listing, let alone buy it. Because if you're priced even the same as the other guys, and they have 500 reviews, you've got five, you might never even get a click because they're like, well, I, I'm not even gonna, you, you gotta give them a reason to like stop and click on your listing like, wow, this is priced $5 less. They have more reviews, but that little thumbnail looks the same as the other one. Let me at least see what this is about, okay? And then the next step, which by the way, is another um, thing that he, is a big mistake sellers make is they don't make the emotional connection in their listing with their buyers. They just wanna keyword stuff their bullet points with scientific terms or things. No guys, if you're a no name brand, which we're all, that's what private labels are. You know, when we start off, you've got to give them, you got to make that emotional connection to give them a reason to, to buy your product. So the first, that, that's one thing that uh, FBA sellers, I, I would say, make the mistake. But again, yes, I would, uh, depending on the competitiveness of the niche, I would lower the price unless I'm trying to do reverse psychology and then I go way higher and really get a premium style feel to my listing. You know, if, if as long as it is premium, and then you're going to get the people who click on it regardless of reviews because, oh, wow, this thing is priced $29. Everybody else is 14. There must be something special about this, you know? So those are the two different ways I go with pricing. That's what I try to do. I, I try to have a reason to be premium and then go premium, but not too extreme, like a few dollars. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I added my own question. So if we have one product selling well and we want to launch a similar or same brand product, how do you properly leverage the existing product to launch the new one? Good, good point. So um, what I would do is um, I personally use a service called uh, uh, Six Leaf. Uh, they're at sixleaf.com. I, I don't I don't get affiliate commission or anything uh, from them. They have this uh, service called Bridge. So I just did this as a test for another customer. So what happens is that you've been selling like, let's say, six to eight months or something. And let's say you've sold like 10,000 units. All right. What they do is they download those sales reports put it into their system, and then they create a Facebook audience. Uh, they find, based on all of your uh, customers, they find the actual Facebook accounts, and then it's linked directly with your Facebook account. And then now they're able to target those people who have already bought your product, your brand, something similar. And those people are like 10 times as likely to buy your product as opposed to somebody off the street. So like the normal way of doing like a launch, if you're not doing a launch service, if you're just gonna try and do your own Facebook ads, which you totally can, You've got to do, you've got to put this uh, like tape at like 90% off to get people to buy it. Because unless somebody needs tape at that moment, they have no reason to buy it. But then they see 90% off, they're like, shoot, I'll buy this for 90% off. And I'm sure somebody needs tape, right? And that's the whole, that's the whole process uh, or that's the whole thought process behind giveaways. But if you're targeting your customers who are, have already bought your product, you can give, you can offer this for like 30% off. And they're like, oh shoot, I'll buy that. Um, and your, your conversion rate is going to be good. And now you're not losing so much money in the giveaway. So that's actually a very good method to, to retarget your existing customers off of Amazon. You know, you can't do that. Omni don't, don't go into buyer seller messages, people and, and, and say, Hey, would you like to buy my new product? You'll be, you'll be shut down by, by Amazon right away. But to me, that's the best way to leverage your existing customers. Um, and of course there's next levels. You can do many chat. Um, you can do email lists, but that's the easiest way right there. Yeah, Daniel said you can do that on Feedback Quiz. You can. You can also do it just on Seller Central. Just download it. Yeah, yeah, download it and go directly to Facebook and you upload and, and then match the match the different columns. But I, I'm lazy, so that's why I use six, six weeks. 
I, I just realized we don't, I didn't ask you, how do you launch? For, for my launches, I, I do the Facebook uh, campaigns. I use, uh, or Six Leaf, you know, as one, I've used other services like Rebate Key, you know, uh, I diversify it, but I usually use what I guess is called the, the giveaway method for launches because a lot of my clients in the past, they want to get on page one right away. And that's the only, that's literally the only way, the only legal way to do it. Of course, now there's black hat people who, who, I mean, I'm wearing a black hat here, but don't worry guys. I don't do black, black hat stuff. We, both of us have black hats. We know what's up. So um, there, there's other, you know, shady ways to get to page one, but the only way, I think we're good now. I see you again. So discounted Facebook ads? Yeah, discounted Facebook ads or using a launch service uh, to, to run traffic. And and I have different techniques I do like that. You know, a lot of people just focus on one keyword, but I use that technique I talked about earlier where I will target detox cleanse, but then I'll choose at the very same launch four other words with detox cleanse in it so that overall I have to give away less units because each of those words are like playing off of each other and giving me like rank juice. Um, so that's just one method that I use that maybe it's a little bit different than some people. Next question. John, I want to learn about launches with no giveaway, similar to viral launch new method, all PPC. Yeah. So for, for people who do that, I, I know a lot of people who do that. It's just um, like one guy, well, one of my friends, Dennis from Russia, he's like, he, he's tried a few launches without giveaway method and only PPC. So, so he just goes really hard and heavy because he doesn't want to wait two, three, four months to organically get to page one. Um, so what he does is he'll, he'll make a crazy budget, like a thousand dollars, really aggressive budget on all his top keywords. And yeah, that's another way. I mean, within two or three weeks, he says he gets to page one as long as he's uh, converting for it, which again, goes back to the original thing of, making sure the keywords that you're targeting, whatever method you're doing, are the most relevant to your buyers. But if, if you've done that correctly, you should be successful getting a page one on PPC, but you just gotta, you, you can't do that based on a $50 budget or even a $100 daily budget. You've gotta go hard and heavy uh, with, with PPC launching. Uh, Jason said, difference between Cerebro and index checker for checking keywords on an ASIN. That's his first question. Perfect question. Amazing question. I get that a lot. Great question. Uh, Cerebro is what we call a reverse ASIN lookup tool. You enter an ASIN or multiple ASINs, and what it returns to you is not the words that it's indexed, because it actually returns you words that it's not indexed for, all right? Because it's returning words that that product is coming up in the top 306 positions on Amazon. And when I say top 306, that's like usually the top 20 pages in the, in, the, in the search results. And like I had said at the beginning, you could be searchable for words that are not in your listing if you converted for it in PPC. So it's showing you all those words. And another thing that people get confused about is keyword tracker in Cerebro. Again, Cerebro is not just tracking the keywords, it's giving you a position of when we located it. Um, but index tracker is just checking, are you searchable? And we actually uh, do three checks if you're searchable. We check traditional, uh, index, which is ASIN plus keyword. We check what's called the field ASIN check. And that's actually, you can actually use uh, Helium 10 to see if your product is on that special index that you converted on PPC. Uh, and then we have what's called the storefront check. Um, so we, we run three checks to see if you're index. And then what you guys need to look at is the last column. If any one of those was a yes, that means you're yes. So, so again, uh, you could be indexed for something that you are um, not ranking for, you know, just because maybe there's 10,000 competitors, not obviously not everybody's going to be top 300, but at the same time, you can be ranked for something in Cerebro and not be indexed for. Do you do any product research? Yes, uh, I do a little bit. Um, I have different methodology. I, I think a lot of us use the same methodology. One thing I like doing, the only thing I'll mention that that might be different. I mean, all of us know how to say, hey, show me something that's selling well that only has two and a half stars or you know whatever. But the one thing I think that people don't do enough is looking at uh, non-optimized listings. So I'm not sure if the other tool, you know, most of the other tools absolutely can do what I just said about looking at star rating and sales and stuff. But um, one thing I liked about Helium 10 was we have a uh, something to show the number of images that a listing has. Because nine times out of 10, if you can find a listing that only has two images, the bullet points are also garbage and the, the, the whole listing is garbage. So if you find a listing that's selling $10,000 a month, that's not a brand name and only has two images, chances are that's an opportunity uh, you know, that could be an opportunity for that niche. I'll tell you a secret. That's what Brock does. Oh, that's what Brock does? Yeah. yeah. He keeps sending me these, uh, these listings. He goes like, these guys suck. How are they selling so much? <laughs> right? Yeah. Those, 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 uh, those are prime for the prime for targeting. Yeah. Uh, two step URLs. The ones that, that does not work for me almost at all in my test is the storefront URL. 
that one just stopped, kind of stopped working months ago. And uh, also there's a one on Gems page called Hidden Keyword ASIN URL. Some people have success with that, but me, I haven't had great success. The two ones that have worked best for me over the last three months are the brand two-step URL and what's called the field ASIN two-step URL. Um, Arthur says bullet points. How long is too long these days per bullet? Long form or short form, which do you think converts better for products that are typically one-time buys? Yeah, so so um, in some categories, you can do up to 500 characters. I would never even get close to that. Uh, first of all, uh, unless something has changed, uh, only the first 1,000 characters are indexed uh, as far as the last that somebody told me. So, you know, the maximum you could technically do is like 200 per line. Um, but sometimes it might be, it might look a little bit like keyword stuffing. So you just, it depends on the niche, you know, like if, if, if you're in the clothing niche, I think actually the, the, the maximum is 100 just because it just, there's no point to have bullet points longer than that, you know, for, for a piece of clothing. The one thing I say about bullet points, you know, regardless of how many characters is, is the number one and number two bullet points, which are usually the ones that are visible on mobile as well. That's where you have to make the emotional connection. So don't worry too much about your keyword in there one. Find something that speaks to the buyer's uh, hopes or fears or whatever. Um, and then don't make it seem like it's keyword stuffing because, you know, you and I know like if, as a buyer, if we see something like that, we're like, ah. Sometimes I'll just like click away. I'm like, oh, I see what this guy is doing here. This is a bunch of BS. I'm just going to go to another listing. So you got to find that sweet spot where you're able to put the keywords you want, but it doesn't it doesn't look ugly. Copywriting is a skill that we all should have. Is Brock Johnson back? Yeah, Brock. Brock's here. You want, you want to say hi? Brock. I'm going I'm to plug this in while, while, while he jumps on here. Let me. Just lost. How's it going? Where are you at? I'm in E. I'm I'm at home. I just we just rented a really nice place here because Brad's coming out here. So I was like, all right, well, you know, I like to rent mansions when I'm going to do an event. So we, we, I thought we found one like five minutes from my house. So what do we got? It's llamas. There's a llama on it. Dude, it how epic is this? Like, if you look, the most trending animal, a growing trend this year, the llama. I, I was here before the llama was cool, though. Just remember that. But the reason why that's happening is because of Fortnite, and it's psychologically in Fortnite. Apparently, kids are jacked whenever they find a llama because they get like weapons or something. So they're been psychologically trained to celebrate every time they see a llama, and then that's now creating demand for llama products. And you'll see that there's a huge trend in llama. So I thought it was just because of that one ad that went viral that you did. What? Oh <laughs> yeah, the one it was because of me. Yeah, I know, right? I wish. That's what I was gonna say. But no, that's uh, pay attention to that stuff in society because I didn't realize it. But like the, anything that is huge in society affects our buying per habits. And like if you can get ahead of that curve, um, you can crush it. And you've been saying llama for two years. Oh, I've been a llama <laughs> for life. Okay. Fana says, question: How to keep high ranking consistently? Yeah, the, the, you can't control that necessarily. Uh, the one thing that's going to do that is converting organically at the end of the day. Uh, if you're not converting organically or you have terrible conversion rate or nobody's clicking on your listing, you're going to fall off. So how to, how to maintain that? Don't just put your listing on autopilot once you get to page one. Once a week, once a month, redo all of your original keyword research using that Cerebro compare ASIN method because trends are different. You know, maybe there's a new keyword that's a main keyword for a listing that, that popped up. If you leave things on autopilot, you're missing out on all that traffic. So continue validating what um, is the main keywords for your product and make sure they're in your listing. Number two, if you've got like over 400, 500, 600, 700 reviews, use uh, hire a VA to look at all those reviews to find common trends in it, not positive, not negative, just overall, or use Helium 10 review downloader where you just click it twice. And what it, what it does is, uh, you might not even know about this, but uh, you, you click review downloader and then you hit analysis. And what analysis does is every three, four, and five word phrase that come up most in the reviews, it listed in descending order, and you can click on it to see the context. So everybody who has your product, they might be all talking about something that you didn't even realize is important and you don't even mention your listing. But now you see that 50 out of 200 reviewers all say they love the texture of your product compared to other competitors. So now what do I do with that information? I'll go to my first bullet point and I'll be like, are you upset with a slimy texture of other products like this? Well, our customers love the 
smooth or you know, whatever, you know, texture. So now again, you're making that emotional connection. So that's important to always, number one, make sure your keywords still are the most relevant up to date. Number two, find out things that can give you that emotional connection with your buyer. All right. Speaking of building 10, you guys were super nice in giving me a crazy, a crazy deal for my subscribers. And it's seven days free and 50% off for the first month, which I think no one else has except maybe Brock Johnson. Uh, Sean told Sean sent me that message in Skype. I'm like, I, I didn't approve this. I was like, Who, how did you? No, I'm serious. Like, I, I'm Sean's boss. He, he he must have skipped me and gone straight to Manny for this. But but you know, Samer Brax, Brock Johnson, you guys have the names. But I literally have never seen that that offer for anybody else. <laughs> No BS. Yeah. I was shocked about that offer. I think Brock might be upset that, that you're getting it. He thought he was the only no, one. No, huh? I mean, Sam and I work together. Yeah, so like we do 50% yeah, off now yeah. for the first month too. Like we started that a uh, few months ago. Right, but but, but you know, between you and me, and don't put this out there because I know Manny would be mad, but it's really a no brainer because it's risk free. And I say that because like, let's say day 29, you've been using Helium 10 and then now you decide, you know what? I'm not going to sell on Amazon. I'm just going to sell on eBay. Obviously, you don't want to continue with Helium 10. You can just ask for your money back um, and they'll, they'll give you your money back. So it's zero risk, even if you're paying full price. But this this just makes it a, an extra no brainer to, to do it. <laughs> I put the link in the description. If you guys want seven days free, which no one else has except maybe Brock Johnson, you can get it from the link in the description and 50% off the first month. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for spending the time with us, sharing all your knowledge. If you want uh, anything special, any videos for us to do with Bradley, let us know. We'll do like a tutorial thing. Give you a countdown. Bradley, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Bye. Been like our... All right. Bye. See you guys. Bye, everybody. Brock says bye.